Hi guys, Zaga here, and welcome back to another tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make a third-person shooter deathmatch game in core. Now, just to clarify, this video will be part one of a four-part series, and today I'll be going over the logic of this shooter. Now, this video is sponsored by core, and all links to it will be in the description below. And not to waste your time further, let's begin. To start, we're going to create a new project, so press create, and then press create new, and we're going to make a new empty project, so press start project and call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it tutorial. So press create and then it's going to take some time to create. There we go. And here we have our world. If I go ahead and press play, you will see we already have a third person character and we can just go ahead and run around. Now this is perfect for us because we want a third person character. But obviously if you weren't going for that, you can go ahead and change some settings around to have a first person or I guess whatever you want. So at this point, we can do a couple things. Let's go ahead and start by making the main game logic. So I'm going to right click here on the hierarchy and I'm going to press new folder. And I'm just going to call this game settings. Game settings and I'm going to drag game settings into this folder to keep things a little bit tidier. Now there's a couple things we're going to need. Because this is a death match, this means that you can kill someone and die and kill someone again. This means we need a respawn. Now really cool, you can just type in respawn in here and add respawn settings into this game settings. On here then, we can go ahead and play around with some of these values such as respawn delay you can go ahead and change that because that is basically the time to respawn after death i'm gonna leave it at 10 seconds which is the default one because i feel like that works but if you're playing it and you're realizing that the respawn is too slow you can go ahead and decrease that now respawn mode you can go ahead and press this and it's really cool because you can press none in place round robin cl closer spawn point stuff like that i'm going to do random spawn point this basically means that we will respawn in a random area basically meaning that we just can't camp someone's spawn point at this point because that can be kind of annoying the next one we're going to need is some team settings so let's go ahead and type in team settings and drag them in so in my game particular in deathmatch i'm not going to have a team's versus i'm going to do a free for all so you can kill anyone so let's go ahead and you know set that here and we can go ahead and do that at this point so for the time being these will be our game settings now you can go ahead and look through and add any game settings that you want but for me this is going to be perfect so the next one we're going to need to do is create a new folder and i'm just going to call this game states and i'm just going to call it game states and this will basically hold any game states that we're going to do. And I'm going to show you how to create some of them right now to help our game just run a bit better. So first of all, let's add a lobby required players. This basically means that we need a number of players before we can play. Now this is a death match, so typically we will need two players. So you can change that to number two. But for testing purposes, I would change it to number one so I can showcase you the game. So we can go ahead and put that in and there we go. Now you can play around with these values however much you want, but for me this will do for now. So another thing we're going to do is add a lobby restart players. So here we have this lobby start respawn players, which is what we're going to want. So let's go ahead and put that in and drag in game settings. This basically just means that our players will respawn when you start the game so everything is cleared. And also we're going to add a lobby start reset KDA. This basically means that if you played a previous game and got about 5 kills or something, you're not going to save that value. So it's just going to be reset. And that's pretty simple. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a round kill limit. Now the reason we're going to add this is because typically in death matches you can just win the game. So after a certain amount of kills, we want the game to end. So I'm going to change this to 20 in fact, not 10. So once 20 kills is reached, we go ahead and restart. Uh, well, you, I guess you win, then we can play again, I guess. I'm also going to drag third person camera settings in here because it's just going to keep things a little bit cleaner. Once again on here, we can go ahead and play around with any of the stuff. Like you can press third person settings and you know, you just kind of change anything you want, I guess. Okay, so that's basically our game settings done right now. Now, if you press play, you will not notice a single change, but there is things in here. So if there was to be other players here and if we were to fight, the whole sort of main logic would be working at this point, which is pretty awesome, in fact. So before we 
end this tutorial for part one, I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to make some UI things so I can just go ahead and show you. So down here we can scroll down and go into game components and press UI and this will show us a bunch of game components that are UI and it's really awesome. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to add a health bar so I'm going to drag that in. I'm also going to add a compass because that's what I want for example. I also want a kill feed. Um, let's also make a play couch display like so. And yeah, that's all I'm going to add for now. And I'm going to show you how you can go ahead and edit this and have it however you want. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to edit this health bar. So the way we're going to do it is I'm first of all going to go into UI elements and we're going to be using some of this to make this a little bit nicer. So let's right click this and press the um, instance this object is basically going to mean that it's no longer a pre-made instance and it's going to be our own. So let's open this up and go into the panel. I'm going to open this up and I do not want the text box so I'm going to press delete. I'm also going to use this and I'm basically going to go ahead and drag it on the x-axis. Drag it on the x-axis until it's maybe just in the corner right here which is quite nice. And I'm also going to make it go up a little bit, like so. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a UI image to this. So let's drag this image in. And I'm going to go down here, set the color to maybe a black, and turn the alpha down a little bit, like so. I'm going to drag this on top so it's actually behind. And we can go ahead and adjust it however much we want. Okay, so if I'm playing around, I managed to add this little UI image, and we've got it nicely set. On the progress bar itself, I'm going to go here and turn the progress all the way to max. And I'm going to change the color to maybe like a nice green, for instance. But you can obviously do whatever you want. So now if we press play, you will see we have the compass, we have the little kind of players, or how many there is in the lobby, and we have a little health bar. Just to make things a little bit spicier, I guess, I'm going to go ahead and go into this play account display, and I'm also going to de-instance this object. And down here, I'm going to go ahead and just move this panel, in fact. And I want to just in the corner right here. And I'm also going to add a UI image. All right, so after some fidgeting, I've gone ahead and set it around like so. And now if we press play, you will notice we have a little background behind it, which is quite nice. And this will appear for every single player, which is really awesome. Okay guys, so before finishing this tutorial, I figured I'd show you one more thing of how to add a starting weapon. So this is not necessary, you can just have your weapons in the middle of the map, but particularly for my one, I want this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this core content and type in static, and drag this player's static equipment. I'm also going to go ahead and find a gun that I want to use, so let's go into weapons and choose one of these. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this advanced revolver. So let's drag this in. Right click it and press de instantiate this object and on here delete the server context and delete the trigger pickup. Right click this and press create new template from this. And I'm just going to call this revolver. And press create new template. We can now delete this as we have already saved it. And on here double click on this equipment table and look for your revolver. So you can see there's different revolvers here, but we want this one, which is this kind of icon, and this is the name we called it. So let's double click on this. And now when we press play, you'll notice that our player spawns with an awesome revolver in their hand. You can shoot it and it works fine, which is pretty awesome. Now, another thing I'm going to quickly show you is you can actually edit things on this however you want. So for example, if I go to this project content and I type in my revolver, I can drag this in and on here I can change any things I want, such as the weapon itself, for example the range, the damage, the multi shot and stuff like that. And when I'm finished I'm going to right click and press update template from this and then we can delete this. And that's basically it guys, that's how you add a starting weapon into your game. And the thing is every player that loads in will now have this which is really cool. So this is it for today's tutorial guys, we basically have the whole game logic done and a bunch of the U UI aspects done. In the next episodes we're going to be doing like the guns and the map stuff which is going to be really exciting. So if you enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like, also download corn in the description down below if you want to obviously follow this tutorial and whatnot. And I love you guys and thank you so much for the support and I'll see you guys later. Bye! Oh, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below and like the video. Bye!